study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com all right to piggyback off god's people is israel and you know his people as well I'm going to read Acts 13, verses 14 through 23, starting off. But passing through from Purge, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the congregation on the Sabbath day and sat down. Mm -hmm. And after the reading of the Torah, or law, and the prophets, the rulers of the congregation sent to them, saying, Men, brothers, which is because they're Israel, if you have any word, or you could just also say they're believers too. That's why they're brothers. If you have any word of encouragement for the people, speak. And Shoal, standing up and motioning with his hand, said, Men, Israelis, and those fearing Elohim or God, listen, the Elohim of this people, this people, Israel, did choose our fathers and exalted the people in their sojourning in the land of Mitzrayim or Egypt. And with a high arm, he brought them out of it. Now, for a time of about 40 years, he sustained them in the wilderness. And having destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave their land to them as an inheritance. And after that, he gave judges for about 450 years until Shemuel, the prophet, but then asked for a sovereign, and Elohim gave them Shoal, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And having removed him, he raised up for them Dawid, or David, as sovereign, to whom also he gave witness and said, I have found Dawid, the son of Is Ishaya, a man after my own heart, who shall do all my desires. Now catch this. From this one seed, according to the promise of Elohim, or God, Raised up for Israel a savior, Yahusha. For who Israel? That's not so for strong. Christianity, not for Christian, for Israel. That's so strong, savior. bro. That's it. Mike drop. There you go. That's 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 I mean again, I, I just yeah. Man, may Yahoo open the eyes to as many Christians as possible who are listening to this message or as many whatever messages that are like this may, may yahuwah open their eyes take the scales literally the scales off their eyes because they will read right past this they'll read right past it they don't see the significance the application to these types of words you know it's all history to them it's all the past to them there's no application to that oh it's, it's past tense no it's not past tense it's a reality it's a reality According to the promise, God raised up for Israel a savior. That's not past tense. He's still our savior. Yahusha is still our savior. So if Yahusha is still our savior, he is still raised up for Israel. He died. He resurrected. He ascended into heaven for Israel. Right. And he's alive today for Israel. And he's coming back for Israel. <laughs> I mean, man, that was a strong passage, D-Rail. Thank you. Ezzy, did you want to bounce off any of this? No, I'm good. All right. So where are we at? Are we here? Romans 11. Moving on. Here we go. So regarding all this, Romans 11, verse 1 to 7, I say then, has God cast away or rejected his people? Certainly not. It doesn't get any more plain than this. You can't claim Paul came preaching a different gospel. He didn't preach a different gospel. So when Paul was saying that God, uh, that, that God is not just the God of the Jews, but of the Gentiles also, he's not doing away with the fact that Israel is his people. He's letting you know right here 
No, God didn't, God didn't expire his covenant plan that he established since Abraham. He didn't stop it. For I also, Paul says, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. He brings it all together of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people. It's similar to how Yahusha speaks about the law. He mentions it twice in case you're not paying attention. I did not come to destroy the law. Do not think that I came to destroy the law. I did not come to destroy it. You got to mention it twice for people who don't, his people still don't get it. He says, God has not cast away his people from whom he foreknew. He foreknew Israel. He saw them in his plans when he was making the heavens and the earth. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel saying, and some Christians would like to stop there. Oh, you see, he's against God is against Israel. Oh, keep reading. Don't stop there. Yahuwah, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars and I alone am left and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I, this is what the response is. Yahuwah, the God of Israel, the God of the universe, the creator of all things, says, I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Even so then, at this present time, look, Paul's bringing it back to the present. This isn't old, this isn't old news that expired. He's not talking about something old that has been rusted and dusted and disappeared as if some people want to interpret the book of Hebrews, talking about the law. It's getting, it's old and ready to vanish. They want to say that it's about the law. No, Paul says, Paul says, even so then at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace, a remnant of what, according to the context of what he's just been saying. A remnant of Israel. There is a small group of Israelites who are awake or whose eyes have been opened. And this is according to the election of God's grace. God chose these people. God woke these people up. And these people responded to that awakening. It says, and if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Meaning these people, these Israelites, it wasn't in their, out of their own accord that they were awakened. They weren't awakened by their own strength or their own abilities to be righteous and good. It was Yahuwah's divine sovereignty to first and foremost pierce their hearts with the gospel, which everybody was getting the gospel. All Israelites were hearing the gospel. So everybody's hearts were being pierced. That is, that is Yahuwah's grace right there, for wicked Israelites who should know better, who mocked and pierced our Messiah, for them to still hear the good news, it's grace. But only a few people responded to that piercing. Okay? So it is not by the works of these people. It is Yahuwah's choosing to pierce their hearts. But some people don't respond to that piercing. Some people push away. Some people push away. They suppress those feelings. You know, there's some people that get emotional when they hear about the love of Yahuwah and how much he loved us and died for us despite our wickedness. And they cry and they get teary-eyed, but then they suppress it, you know, because they know the cost. Some of them know the cost. They got to give up a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff in their life to follow him. And they don't feel like, some don't feel like they're worthy and some don't want to. But it says, and if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, then it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no, uh, otherwise, work is no longer work. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. The rest of the Israelites were blinded, but there were still an elect people who Christians especially reformed Christians swear up and down that they are the elect <laughs> and they don't claim to be Israel. And the context of this in chat Romans 11 is Israel's being is God's elect. Galatians 6:16 6, says and as many 
as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. And then last, Revelation 21, 12, uh, uh, Revelation 21, verse 12. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates. And this is talking about the new, I believe it's the new Jerusalem. And 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. It just doesn't go away. You can't run away from this. And then lastly, Exodus 19, we discussed this today, but I'm repeating it. Exodus 19, 4 to 6. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. This statement is pretty much repeated in uh, the book of uh, Peter. I don't remember if it's first or second Peter, uh, first Peter 2. Uh, about Yahuwah choosing a, a chosen people, royal priesthood, things like that. Um, th there is a difference. There is a minor difference. I think royal priesthood is mentioned, which is not mentioned in Exodus 19.4, which is what? It's a mixture of, let's see, right here. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests. All right. The other one says royal priesthood, right? Peculiar people, First uh, Peter two nine. You shall chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Okay, royal priesthood could be assimilated with kingdom of priests, but royal priesthood almost sounds like kings and priests. Uh, uh, you know, which is used in Israel, priests were not allowed to be kings. Okay, and kings weren't priests, uh, from what I'm aware of. Levites were the priests. Kings were, you know, Levites were not allowed to be kings, okay? But under Melchizedek, you have a combination of king and priesthood. So that's a very interesting topic. And that's it.